A very warm good morning to all of you. Dear students, once again I would like to welcome all of you to a new session of the civics class. Today we are going to continue with the same chapter, chapter number 2, the president and the vice president, part 4. Do you remember what we were discussing in the last class? We were discussing about the powers of the president of India, especially the executive powers vested with our president. Today we are going to continue with the same point of view that is the powers of the president of India but with the legislative powers. The powers related to the legislation or the making of rules and regulations of our country. In one of my previous classes I have told you very clearly in India we have three tier system of administration which means the center of administration lies in three different organs. First one it is President, second one Lok Sabha, third one Rajya Sabha. So these three organs together taking care about the administration of our country. So it's a responsibility or it's a power of the President to address sessions of Parliament. Parliament consists of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, he has the power to address both houses of parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Especially when the parliament is assembled for the first session after each general election to the Lok Sabha. In class 9th, when you were studying about election, you might be remembering that in every five year, there will be a general election taking place in our country. So, the first session after each general election, there will be a meeting of all the representatives. So, to address the parliament, especially to address Lok Sabha after the general election, the first session after the general election, it's the right or it's the power of the president. He has the power to address sessions of parliament. Again, at the commencement of the first session of each year, which means in the beginning of every year, or the first session of every year he has the power to address the parliament again when he addresses the parla parliament he will be emphasizing on the internal and external policies of the government the president has the power to address either house of parliament or their joint sitting at any time so whenever the president feels that it's a time or it's very urgent to address any of either the houses either houses of parliament or he can address the joint sitting of any time joint sitting means there are certain occasions where Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha gathering together or sitting together so in those cases also he can address the all responsible or representatives together second one messages to parliament he has the power to send messages to either house of parliament which means he has the power to send messages uh, either to Lok Sabha or to Rajya Sabha and it will be regarding to any pending bills or to any other matter. So it is not necessary that he has the power or it is not told that he has to speak only about a particular point but any on any on any subject or any matter he can send messages to Lok Sabha as well as Rajya Sabha. Either it can be uh, discussing about some pending bills. So that's about the message to parliament. And the third one says that someone and uh, prorogue the houses. Which means he has the power to someone. Someone means he can call all the representatives to gather or he can arrange a session of the parliament. Either Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. And prorogue means he can cancel the session of the Houses of Parliament. Again, the power to summon Parliament is subject to the condition. So, if there are sudden emergency or if there is some kinds of internal or external problem, he can call a session of the Parliament. He can call all the representatives to gather. So, it is according to the condition or the situation. There should not be a gap of more than six months between two sessions of each house which means there should not be gap between two sessions more than six months suppose if the Lok Sabha gathered uh, during February and there should not be six months 
gap between the next session which means if the if the parliament gathered in the month of february it should not go beyond september so before september the parliament should be gathered again according to our constitution normally there are three different sessions first one the budget session february to may the monsoon session july to september and the winter session from november to december so see there is no six months gap between any of this session the parliament is gathering together again before completing six months of gap so it is the power of the president to summon and prorogue the house the fourth power or the fourth point says about the dissolve the lok sabha the power to dissolve the lok sabha we know that lok sabha is being known as the people's house which means the members of lok sabha are directly being elected by the people so that's why it can dissolve or the president have the power to dissolve lok sabha and order fresh election so in in different number of uh, cases or because of number of reasons the president can uh, dissolve the lok sabha and once if the lok sabha is dissolved he can order for a new election but in the case of rajya sabha rajya sabha is a permanent body that's why it cannot be dissolved or it is not subject to dissolution so if the members of rajya sabha is elected for 6 years it they can remain in power or they can rule uh, until completing their period of time that means 6 years next one is about the power to nomination or power of nomination nominating members the president can nominate 12 members to rajya sabha and there are certain criteria of appointing or nominating 12 members those members must be from among persons having special knowledge or practical experience in these matters like literature science art and social service so if the president is appointing 12 people those 12 people must be experienced or the people who are having special knowledge in the fields like literature science art and social service you might be remembering sachin tendulkar was a representative or was a member of rajya sabha a few years before even number of uh, film artists or actors and again number of scientists including dr a p j abdul kalam so these people were experts in some kinds of uh, or some different kinds of fields like literature science art and social service again the president may nominate two members of anglo indian community to lok sabha so to rajya sabha he can appoint 12 members and to lok sabha he can appoint two members but the appointment behind two members to lok sabha is on a particular condition what is that he must feel that there were no adequate representation from the uh, particular community or in other words he must feel that in lok sabha there were no anglo indian representatives so in those cases only he can appoint two anglo indian community members to lok sabha the sixth point is assent to bill assent means recognition or approval approval to bills no bill can become a law without the assent and the signature of the president so there is a procedure of making different rules and regulation it starts from the parliament once a bill is passed by both the houses the discussion of a bill can begin in any of the houses like uh, it can start in lok sabha or it can start in rajya sabha certain criteria are there we have already seen those points in the first chapter of our civics that is about the union parliament certain bills can discuss only in lok sabha so certain criteria are there i am not speaking about those but i am speaking about the general uh, bills so once a bill is passed by both the houses so both the houses means if at the discussion of a bill started in lok sabha uh, and they have passed it then it will go to rajya sabha and from rajya sabha also it passed so that's what is meant by both the houses so once a bill is passed by both the houses it is sent to the president for his approval so lok sabha and rajya sabha approved a bill 
and then it is being sent to the president for his approval the president may give his assent or the president can give his approval or withhold the bill which means he can reject it or he can send it back to the house concerned with recommendations three different options are there with him he can approve it or he can reject it or he can send it back to the house with certain recommendations or reconsideration so it is a procedure so once if a bill is passed by both the houses it is sent to the president for his approval then the president may give his assent or withhold the bill or send it back to the house concerned with recommendations however if the bill is passed again in the same form he has to give his assent to the bill or he has to approve the bill once if he is approved once if he approves the bill then it will become a law so it is the procedure so usually the houses examine the recommendations of the president we have already seen the third uh, option of the president that he can send it back to the house concerned with recommendations or he has given some suggestions so usually the house examine the suggestions of the president now the seventh power of the president is to promulgate ordinances promulgate means to declare ordinances under article 123 the president can promulgate an ordinance the president can issue an ordinance which has the same status as an act of parliament so the ordinance of the president is having the same power like a new law made by the parliament and he has the right to withdraw the ordinance say at any time so once if he uh, issued or declared an ordinance and he can uh, recall it or he can withdraw it and it's his power it is subject to the following conditions so if the president has to promulgate an ordinance there are certain conditions first one the president must be satisfied that circumstances make it necessary which means the president must feel that it is very necessary to issue uh, an ordinance second one promulgated at a time when both houses of parliament are not in session suppose if there is a problem the president can of course issue uh, an ordinance but if the parliaments or both the houses of the parliament are in session of course they will be discussing those issues in the parliament suppose if the parliament is not in session he can issue the ordinance however if one house is in session there is no bar in issuing of ordinances so suppose if the one house either lok sabha or rajya sabha is in session there is no such an issue about uh, declaring an ordinance again if the president issued an ordinance it should be laid before both houses of parliament when they reassemble which means suppose if the president of our country is issuing an ordinance when the parliament was not in session so maybe after two month or three month when the parliament gathered together again they ha- the president has to introduce or the president has to present this particular ordinance to lok sabha and rajya sabha or to the parliament so they will be discussing about it the particular ordinance issued by the president if the parliament does not approve it it will lapse which means if the president issued or president declared an ordinance and the parliament felt that it was not necessary so they won't approve it so in those case it will lapse that means it will lose its legal tender the ordinance lapses if it is replaced by an act of parliament so the president issued an ordinance and it can be disqualified or it can become invalid once if an act of parliament takes place now the eighth point says that assent to some state bills assent means recognition permission to some state bills the governor may reserve some bills passed by the state legislature for the re- reconsideration or the consideration of the president 
so in certain cases when new laws are being made in the state legislative assemblies the governor can keep certain uh, bills for the consideration of the president as in senator president is the head of the parliament or the legislative assembly here in the state governor is the head so whenever new laws are being made in the state legislative assembly they are sending those bills to the governor and the president can reserve some bills which are having certain importance uh, for the consideration of the president and the president has the power to refuse his assent to such a bill or he can also send it back for reconsideration so same like what is happening in the center the president can uh, consider it or he can reject it or he can send it back for reconsideration bills affecting matters such as the powers of the high court are reserved for the consideration of the president suppose in a state if the state legislative assembly is making a new law about the powers of the high court or the matters which are dealing about the powers of the high court they are reserved for the consideration of the president the president can uh, refuse it or he can send it back for reconsideration or the third category that he will be giving his uh, approval so these are the three different uh, steps that the president can do about the state bills and finally the last point is about the formation of new states a bill for the formation of new states or the alternation of areas of the existing states cannot be introduced except on the president's recommendation so in the lok sabha when there are certain discussions going on about the alternation or the formation of new states those kinds of discussion will be introduced in the lok sabha only by the president or only by the recommendations and the consideration of the president those kinds of uh, matters can be discussed in the parliament so these are the different powers especially legislative powers of the president so dear students these were the points which i want to share with you today in this class and in the next class we are going to discuss about the discretionary powers of the president today we are winding up our class here and in the next class we will be coming up with a new point from the same chapter still then i would like to sign off thank you